And thanks, everybody, for being here on the uh, podcast. On this edition, I'm going to feature an interview I did on August 15th, 2018, at East Street Radio on Sirius XM in New York City on the Bruce Springsteen channel. It was uh, called uh, Live from East Street, and the host is Jim Rotolo. Usually, uh, Jim is uh, there along with Dave Marsh. Dave Marsh wasn't there that day. But we had a great time and a great conversation, and I wanted to share it with everybody here on the uh, Roger Hurricane Wilson podcast. So here it is, live from East Street on East Street Radio from Sirius XM on August 15th, 2018. What I want to know is you out there. Sirius XM presents Live from East Street Nation, an open forum for you to call in and talk about Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band. When radio is great, it's something, something happens in the air from all those souls converging around one idea at one moment. Call us at 877-70-BRUCE. That's what's happening here tonight. Now, your hosts, Dave Marsh and Jim Rotolo, live from E Street Nation. And good morning, E Street Nation. Jim and Vinny with you on this Wednesday morning. Dave's got the uh, the week off. He's uh, got some family in town, and so uh, two of us will be hanging with you for uh, for the next couple hours. We're at eight seven seven seventy Bruce eight seven 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 zero two seven eight. We also have Roger Hurricane Wilson, who's going to be joining us in studio. He's got uh, he's got a new album out, a Jersey guy who's been touring all over the country, and uh, he's got some great music. We're going to be uh, playing from him, including. Bruce cover, which uh, is uh, pretty awesome. You're going to dig it, especially if you're into guitars. Roger's a hell of a guitar player. Again, we're at 877 Bruce. For the next uh, half hour or 45 minutes or so, uh, we're here live. Uh, Jim Vinny and Roger Hurricane Wilson is in the studio. Man, I'm so glad to be here. You can't, I can't stand it. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad you're here. We've, we've been talking on the phone for quite, quite a, a few years. Well, yeah, at least about a year and a half or so. Yeah. Um, just I, I'd get in on your conversations while I was out on the road or something like that, and I'm going, I got to talk to these guys. Plus, I met Dave back in uh, 2011 at okay. the uh, Folk Alliance Fest, uh, gathering in Memphis. Right. And he was doing a, he was p- doing a panel discussion with uh, Jack from uh, Electro Records. And I so talked to Dave and sent him some stuff, and we kind of communicated a little bit. So then the one morning I heard you guys, and I was on the road, and I thought, well, I'm going to give him a shout. And it was uh, really nice to be in, you know invited in. No, I'm glad you're here. And so for, for those of you who don't know, Roger, Roger Hurricane Wilson – Originally from New Jersey, correct. Uh, but you're you're just like I said before. You're like a road warrior. You are on the road. How many months a year are you out playing? Well, not as much anymore. But okay. I was doing you know sixty thousand miles a year for a long time, two hundred dates a year for many, many you know for many years. But my deal is, I mean, I'm part. I'm north and south both. I'm, mm. My mama was from Georgia. Okay, my dad was from Kearney, New Jersey. Across he used to row his boat in the Meadowlands over here. Mm-hmm. And so I'm. Uh, Basically, from two lines of crazy people. Okay, <laughs> but my, uh, I had the pleasure of, of really witnessing greatness in motion evolve from the beginning. In other words, what happened was my background. I'm a guitar player, obviously, but uh, I went to an Allman Brothers concert in 1971 in Atlanta. It was the first big concert the Allman Brothers did, and I stood a little too close to Dwayne Allman. That's what happened, mm-hmm. and I was ruined from that night. And here I am today. But there was another time I came back to New Jersey for a vacation. That same year. Now, the, the first concert I just told you about was two months before the Allman Brothers Band recorded the Fillmore album. Okay. Two, a couple months later, I came home for vacation from boarding school in Atlanta, and uh, I was looking around Brookdale College. My dad and I were walking around there because I was going to go there for a year, and I saw a flyer for the Allman Brothers Band, and I, I, and I was freaking out. It was at the Sunshine Inn. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I called the Sunshine Inn, and I told the guy, I said, save me two tickets because I want to know, I want to be at that show. He says, well, you won't have any problem because nobody knows who, the, who these guys are. No. But I had seen the Allman Brothers play senior proms, and I'd seen them play in the Piedmont Park in Atlanta. So anyway, I get to the show, and he's right. Nobody knew who they were. I'm sitting on the floor in the front of the stage, and here's, here's the Allman Brothers band coming on. But there was this guy up there playing guitar and knocking it out with a bunch of guys, a gig they threw together, and it was Bruce Springsteen. Wow. He was, he, was, he was playing. He had Dr. Zoom and the Sonic Boom together. Oh, okay. And it was like one of three gigs. And I knew from watching him, I'm going, 
there's there's something going on, something special here, you know. And yeah. I was, I'm I'm 17 years old, you know, seeing this. So then uh, later on the next summer, um, I went to the uh, Sunshine Inn to see. Bruce had his own show. He had his own band. That was the Bruce Springsteen Band. Mm-hmm. Paid two dollars and fifty cents to get in there and see that show. And it was just amazing, and and I mean, Bruce was uh, had long hair. He was playing, he was playing the Les Paul guitar. He was just knocking it out. He was more of a he was more of a guitar player. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he was killing it, and and it just knocked me out. And so, so you so seeing Bruce play with the well, play in the same bill as the Allman Brothers. Once you saw that show, you knew I got to follow this guy, or you got to. I remember who you remembered who he was. Oh yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, he was like, but he he was only just local, pretty much. I yeah. mean, I know he was doing regional stuff and everything, but he was, uh, but he was killing it. But the other thing was when I went back to, uh, the, the next um, on that flyer from that concert, they were going to have the Allman Brothers return to Sunshine Inn. They had, you know, it said coming soon Almonds. But unfortunately, my senior year when I went back to school, Dwayne Allman passed away in that in that in that accident. So right. that was like a JFK moment for me. That was like, oh, my, you know, because I was ten years old when JFK went. This was the same impact. Yeah. But then another, I went to Brookdale for a year, got a little band together. I actually, played the Student Prince. Did, oh, okay. Did, did a gig at the Student Prince where Bruce had hit Bruce. It was Bruce's house gig, right? Yep. And we played a off night, a Sunday night or something like that. I had a little band called Child in Time. I'm staying with the guys that are, were in that band 40 years ago. They're good friends of mine, Bruce and Glenn Benson. They live over in, in Belford, New Jersey, where I'm where I'm hanging out now. Right. Came, came in on the boat from there yesterday. So, but I get back to Georgia and I get on the radio. I start going on the radio at 88.5 at Georgia State University. This is Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show. You're listening to an interview that I did on August 15th, 2018 on Sirius XM Radio Live on East Street Radio in New York City with uh, Jim Rotello, the host of Live from East Street. And you're hearing that replayed right here on Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show. And I'm, and I'm going through the production room one day and I had a bunch of old records stuck in the production room, right? Mm-hmm. And I pull out, all of a sudden I pull out Greetings from Asbury Park that was stuck behind a bunch of old records. And, I'm, and I walked out and I said, does anybody know who this guy is? Bruce Springsteen. They go, no, I don't know who he is. <laughs> right, right. So, so what, I'm, what I'm trying to get to, and I don't mean to hog the whole thing here, but I'm just saying uh, that I, I was, at a young age, I was able to witness graces both both sides of the Mason-Dixon line. You yeah. Know, the Allman Brothers grow and Bruce grow. And it's just... I've just watched it evolve, you know. So wait, did you play? Did you play the record down th- when you were on the air down? Oh here? yeah, oh and yeah. The yeah. people were like, "Oh wow, I never heard this before." Was this? This is yeah, something? no, and it was it was great. But you know, when that record came out, we all I've heard you discuss it here before that, you know, like I told you when Bruce when I saw, first saw him, he was wailing on guitar and yeah. he was playing rock and roll and stomping it. And then when the thing came out, it was more lyric oriented. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody was going, well, "Where did all this come from?" But, you know the words and everything, right. which was great stuff, and it's, it's just classic, just different than, than what you would experience at at that time, seeing Doctor Zoom and the Bruce Springsteen band back yeah, in the day. But it also seems like with the E Street Band and, and the band coming up, they came up around his songs rather. Like a lot of times, you you get a band together, yeah, and you and you get then you start learning songs as a band and try to do that. Right. Well, the songs were already there, and from my perspective, the songs were already there, and the band grew up around it. Okay. And then in 75, Bruce came to Atlanta right after Born to Run was, was released. And uh, they were, it was the second night of his show at Alex Cooley's Electric Ballroom. And I was writing for a little uh, newspaper, and I went over, over there. And I went downstairs to, for a minute. His manager let me down there. I don't, he didn't want to, but he did. And I went down there. <laughs> Bruce was, standing, was by himself, and he was tuning a 12-string Fender electric guitar. And I asked him, I told him, I said, yeah, you know, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit. Is that okay? And he was real laid back, and he was real preoccupied. And I yeah. understood this, but he's really very nice. And he goes, he said, and I was only twenty two years old, and I'm going, well, Bruce, I just happened to be, you know, I, I saw you at Brookdale, and I played this. And I started rattling all the all these names, yeah. And, and he's going, oh yeah, oh yeah. So it was very kind, but I knew he was preoccupied, so I left and went back upstairs. I said, have a great show, but he was really nice. But I mentioned all the places, you know, that we'd been, right, and. um then I went upstairs, and the E Street Band blew the doors off the place. Sure. And I stood next to the stage for it, you know. Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show. So when did when did you decide to become a musician? Well, I was nine years old taking guitar lessons right. in, in Kingsburg as a kid. And because a friend of mine was taking guitar lessons, and I was going through the motions. And I, was, I, t- I learned how to, you know, read and took lessons for four years i had a stack of books you know two feet high that i could read from and play but it was just going through the motions yeah and then jump ahead 10 years or eight years or whatever and i go see Dwayne allman and i'm i'm done now were you still playing guitar on and off oh yeah yeah i wasn't i mean i was in a school band i was um i was playing trumpet 
drums in the school band. Um, actually, I was actually a drum major in the high school band in in, New, uh, in Georgia. Okay. And that's what really, I got my background, I guess, my for leading a band, which is what I've been doing for the last 45 years. Right. So music was always something you wanted to do? Yeah, just nothing else. Yeah. You know, just, I mean, just, eat, eat, sleep, and breathe it. Right. Right. We're talking with Roger Hurricane Wilson. Uh, by the way, you have a book out, which explains <laughs> your whole... Uh, t- I wrote it just so I wouldn't yeah. forget it. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, is available up on, on, on HurricaneWilson.com is where you, where you can get a copy of this. Um, it's just a... I call it... It's a story of a nine-year-old kid taking guitar lessons. Mm-hmm. And the way I wrote it is that over the, about the past 10 or 15 years, I would just write down the name of a chapter. And then I would just... So I'd go back, and then when I go back and write it, I, would, I did it. Yeah. And so that's what I did. I just kind of documented that, but it's a, a story of a nine-year-old kid taking guitar lessons and where the musical journey has taken him through my 65th birthday this month, you know, last month. So spending time growing up in the North and in the South, uh, obviously musical influences come from all different different yeah. areas, Yeah, obviously. Uh, what were some of your favorites growing up? Well, you know, when not growing up here, I mean, you heard the stuff. Like, I was always influenced by the blues. Okay, I mean, I mean the Animals, Paul Revere and the Raiders, all these, all these bands, the English bands. Yeah, you know, just like what Stevie's running around doing now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had the blues. They were doing the blues. We didn't know it was the blues, but but it right, was the blues. Right. All right. So after Dwayne Allman passed away, the, the Dwayne Allman anthology album came out, and there was a big insert, a big paper insert, a book, kind of a booklet, you know, large photographs and and the whole thing, and and Dwayne was talking about these blues guys now i'm you know 18 years old and reading this mm-hmm. and it's uh he talks about robert johnson so there's the name robert johnson he talks about elmore james there's almost there's, there's two blues guys that you hear about all the time now then there was t-bone walker that he talked about then blind william mattel that wrote statesboro blues all right so i'm going i've got to find out about this now i, I was teaching guitar lessons over in matawan new jersey mm-hmm. I, I just had my first it was, i was home for a year for, after school and I went to a store in Red Bank, and I found these records of these blues artists, and they were all old recordings, you know. And I listened to them, and I, I couldn't make anything out of it. I could, I could hear it. You know, yeah. I, mean, I could hear the stuff that they were talking about, you know, but I, my ear wasn't trained enough to be able to try to learn some of the stuff. But I'm walking around at 19, 18, 19 years old with four blues albums under my arm, Robert Johnson, Elmore James, T-Bone Walker, and, and Blind, Blind Willie McTell. And I'm walking around at 19 years old with these albums under my arm going, I know it's in here because <laughs> he, he, he said it was in here. Yeah. So I'm going to find it, <laughs> and I've been searching for it ever since. <laughs> but you're out, you're playing mostly. You as a musician now, you're playing blues mostly, right? Well, I was influenced by that. I'm I'm writing a lot of stuff Americana. You know, everything falls under the Americana thing now. I mean, the, the blues thing, which is sort of a new term, musical term. Yeah. But, you know, because there's such a there, there's such a melting pot of music. Yeah, I mean that's just what it is. But the, but it all came from. But I teach blues in the schools. I teach a, I've got a little syllabus going on that I teach. Um, because of the origins of American music came from the blues. It came from the, the you know the Mississippi Delta and went to England and then came back. Right. You know, and, and you got to teach the kids that these days. They don't they don't know that. Well, talk talk a little bit about um, you you mentioned teaching with kids, and I know you're doing something involved with with schools or something. Well, it's called Blues in the Schools. Right. It's uh, the Blues Foundation's behind it out of Memphis, but um, it's I've got my own pretty much program. And when I can find an in- administrator or a teacher that can think out of the box and and bring it in, then I'll go in there and do it. And then when when I leave from doing it, the kids are just they're they're just blown away mm-hmm. by by hearing that. So you're coming in, you're kind of playing different stuff and explaining the history behind it and how it... I actually developed a PowerPoint presentation, and it started out way back with uh, people like Robert Johnson and Charlie Patton, and these guys way back in the Mississippi Delta. And then you try, you take a song like uh, That's All Right Mama by Elvis, mm-hmm. you know, that was Arthur Big Boy Crudup, and then and Mystery Train that Elvis did. Because when Elvis first started, he's the one that toppled it over, bring it, brought it over to the uh, to the white audience. Right. But he grew up in the he grew up in Mississippi, and he was drinking the water. I mean, his his mom was a manual laborer, and she was out in the cotton fields. Right. And he was on her apron strings. And so he was out there when these people started singing during the day while they're, you know, during in, in the fields. Uh, Elvis, he, I mean, he took that in. Yeah. So he was, when he started playing, and he was doing the blues first. And I always say, on, I, I always make a little, little, little tribute song of That's All Right, Mom, and kind of a mixture of Elvis stuff when I play. And I say that, you know, Elvis... Uh, Started out singing the blues, just in case you all didn't know that, and uh, and he didn't start out singing my way. You know, he that's a great song, and right. he did it great. And he didn't start out wearing those funny clothes either. 
because Liberace is the one that told them to, to dress like that later on. You know, and, <laughs> is that true? Really? It is true. It is true. <laughs> it is true. But but the but the energy and I saw Elvis at his last show in you know um, in December the year before he passed away. And man, there was nothing like it. Yeah. You know, I mean, the energy was just right there. Wow. Wow. We're talking with Roger Hurricane Wilson. HurricaneWilson.com is where you can uh, pick up his music, his new book. Uh, I, I see you doing something. Uh, you're doing a guitar instruction? Well, I uh, I teach guitar online. I've been teaching guitar lessons for 45 years. Okay. That's my, I mean, I started doing that out of high school just because I had a crummy job that I didn't like. And, and I... I bluffed my way into a to a music store because I'd been you know, I'd taken lessons for four years. Yeah, and so I told the lady at the store. I said, "Well, um, I, you know, I've been teaching for four years," and she goes, "Oh, really?" I'm going, "Yeah, yeah, that's the ticket." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then a little girl came in. But I th- what what I did was I taught somebody to play the way I learned how to play, note by note, and I and I worked my way into it. Right. And then let I went to Atlanta and I started I opened my own place, teaching, developed my own students. And a kid came in one day. I talked about this in the book. A kid came in with a guitar and a record album, holding one in each hand. Nice, clean cut kid. I think he had a school uniform on or something. You know, and he didn't know how to play. And he comes in and he says, "Well, I want you to show me something on this record." And I'm thinking, "Well, I'm, you know, you don't you don't really know how to play yet. You really need to learn some basics." Mm-hmm. And he says, "Yeah, yeah, I know." He says, "But just show just show me something I can have some fun with." And that was the key right there when he said that. And uh, so I put the record on, and I think, and I talk in the book. I think that it was like maybe Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. Okay. And I start tuning it up, and I'm going, you know, it's like then and then and then and so I'm tuning the thing up, and he's going, yeah, show me that, show me that, that lick, you know, while I'm tuning it up, <laughs> <laughs> and and he was eking it out for the rest of the lesson. I mean, he was just fighting it, he's going, yeah, man, I'm gonna have it. But he's never played guitar. No, before. never played guitar. <laughs> but he's going, he's going, I'm gonna get it. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I'll have it next week. Perfect, you know. And when he left, now I'm not. I'm. I'm 19 years old. Yeah. And this happening, okay. And I'm, but I'm already teaching for a living. And he leaves, and the kid's glowing. There's a halo. I mean, there's an aura around the kid when he leaves, right? And I'm sitting there going after the, after he left. I'm going, what just happened here? Well, what happened was he went home and told everybody else, and my phone didn't stop ringing for 10 years. And I had kids carpooling in their parents' cars with a different record album because I was the cool guy in, yeah. North, in North Atlanta that was teaching them what they wanted to hear because everybody else was teaching the way I learned, the boring way, right. twinkle, twinkle, little star and all that. But you still got to – I mean, there's nothing wrong with learning that. You have to learn some of that, to the you know, beginning. But what happened, I just I, – I guess I just catered to the passion of it. Yeah. Of the of the kids. And and so one kid would come in – I mean, after, after dinner, these kids would take their parents' car, four kids with a different record album. And they'd all come to their guitar lesson, and one kid would learn a song, and another one would learn a song, and and for each of their half hour, and they would just it just evolved into it. And then I ended up going to their recitals and playing with them, and, and all this. And so I've taught over a thousand students, you know, in the forty years that I've been doing it. That would have been exactly me. I would have said, "Can you teach me Highway to Hell?" <laughs> That's well, yeah. why I want to learn that riff. <laughs> yeah, and Stairway to Heaven is the song that made me quit teaching guitar lessons for a long time, but <laughs> but. The- and even the music store is put up like in uh, Wayne's World, you know, no stair with yeah, heaven, please. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. <laughs> but it, but it is, but it is, a, you know, it's it's a hard song to play. It's just got a little overdone, right? So, where's home for you? Kennesaw, Georgia. Okay, so you're you're outside of Atlanta. Set up down. You set up. Yeah, down I mean, I've, I've been living there. Um, I've, I've been uh, in my same. I live in a log home back in the, the woods when I'm surrounded by neighborhood now. But I've been there 32 years. And, I got two boys from a previous marriage. Roger Jr. is thirty-three. My youngest son Ryan is thirty-one. They're both married and doing wonderful. Great. My Great. wife Jolie is uh, my backbone and my influence and uh, inspiration for like you know she's one that really helped me get here. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, so she just has always loved the music and taking care and d- done a lot. You know, and then the uh, a lot of people I've met along the way have uh, inspired me also. That's that's fantastic. So are you? I know you're. What brought you into Keensburg? Well, you you came up, you grew up, you spent some, you grew up in Keensburg part time and then part time down in. Down well, went in to school, went yeah. away to school for four years right. from sixty seven to seventy two. Came back for a year, but I was already you know eaten up by the music, so I went back. Right, and then I, I was teaching, developed a business, you know, made a, a life there, and uh, over the past. Uh, 12 years or so well i started rving in 98 and then i got this this niche where i was uh, starting to go out solo and perform for rv parks okay as opposed to clubs yeah because they pay a lot better and i could stay for three or four days and have a good time so it was almost like the road less traveled you know bob dylan or bob dylan once said if you see everybody doing something over here 
we'll go do something over there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. And it's a it, great idea. You, you know, I never, you never even thought to, you know. Yeah, it's, 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 a, you know it's a, but it's not, you know, it's a singer-songwriter oriented thing. Yeah. And it's a, a more adult, some, you know, it's, it's family kind of thing. But, right. But it, they pay great. And I've been doing it for 12 years, but now I'm just winding down. I'm, I did only two on this tour, and I did a car show over in Keyport last week. But okay. I'm just out. You know, I'm, on paper, I'm retired, but on my schedule, I'm not. So. Right, right. So how did you like uh, coming back to New Jersey? When was the last time you were in New Jersey? Well, I came up, uh, I flew up last uh, November. Oh, okay. I, I've been working, in, you know, once a year or so. I'd get over to Pennsylvania or come through. Mm-hmm. I'm working with uh, John Schneider on this video for the song Coming Home to Kingsburg. He's a videographer that, that I'm hanging out with in Keyboard. Great guy, uh, substitute school teacher. He's got a program called uh, Jersey Bay Shore Country. It's online. It's on Facebook. It's a wonderful program. It's on Comcast also. Right. And he's the one that uh, did this video. with, with it. We did it together, and he did the video part. And of course, I wrote the song, but we uh, shot it and just released it the other day. Right. And this is the new song. This is the new single. Coming Home to Kingsburg. Coming Home to Kingsburg, which we're going to which we're gonna get up in a, in a moment. Um, and again, is that, that's available right now? Yeah, sure is. So, okay. BlueStormRecords.com is my uh, website for the record company. HurricaneWilson.com takes you everywhere to, right. that you want to. And then if anybody's in, in, interested in like online instruction, because I teach all over the world online, uh, there's a uh, RogerWilsonGuitarStudio.com is the uh, teaching site, but they're all available from HurricaneWilson.com. Okay. All right. So, uh, Vinny, let's get up Let's get up uh, Roger's new one. It's uh, Coming Home to Keensburg, and uh, we'll, Got it. we'll play that, and then we'll come back, and we'll talk more about, talk about you, you know, more of the music and more about, um, you said you're kind of winding down now. You're retired but not quite well as far, yeah, as far as the touring i mean I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really just trying to create i can record i've got a home studio i can record at home i can release from home i can do everything from home and then i can oh, but i can play the gigs that i want to play I, you know i paid I, like many musicians they paid the dues in the trenches for years and right. i've done that so now it's my turn to do what i want to do good for you good for you we all we're all set all right so this is roger hurricane wilson's new one coming home to keensburg and it's uh, it's available now on uh, hurricanewilson.com we'll be back Jersey driving near the Bay Shore. I think about the old times there and the way they were before. After so many years, so strangely it seems, the car seems to drive itself to exit 117. My whole childhood passes right before my eyes. Memories put in loud and clear I thought they all had died All the folks I ever knew Now I think they're playing tricks They're all riding with me Down Highway 36 No matter where I go in this world I still think about coming home to Kingsburg The love of you have to leave it That's what I've always heard Still I always find myself Coming home to Kingsburg There's no left turn When I get on Main Street The memories start to churn It won't be long now Just until I see Welcome to Kingsburg And the sign at Dixie Lee From the shores of the Raritan Bay To the Garden State Parkway Memories I carry now with me will always stay From the Kingsburg Amusement Park to the tip of Sandy Hook The Bay Shore's rich history is the main chapter in my book No matter 
matter where I go in this world, I still think about coming home to Kingsburg. Love you have to leave it, that's what I've always heard. Still I always find myself coming home to Kingsburg. Love you have to leave it, that's what I've always heard. Still I always find myself coming home to Kingsburg. I'm coming home, coming home. Coming home to Keensburg from Roger Hurricane Wilson, our guest this week on Live from East Street Nation. I like the little, you got the nice ocean in the beginning there. Well, that's on the that's on the video. We were out shooting uh, last week, and I walked up on the deck overlooking the beach from Keensburg, looking at Staten Island, and there was a dog barking in the background. Mm-hmm. And I went, man, I love that, you know. And, yeah. then, and then we just kind of we, we kind of brought up the ocean, you know, sound a little bit, and it, I love it. That's a live interview on Sirius XM Radio that I did back on August fifteenth, twenty eighteen, with Jim Rotolo of Live on East Street on Channel Twenty on Sirius XM on the Bruce Springsteen East Street Channel. It was a great interview. We had a great time, and I'm just featuring it here for you on the American Music Show. Yours truly, Roger Hurricane Wilson and Jim Rotolo. Is the amusement park still there? Yeah. Kingsburg Amusement oh, Park is still there. It's, it's rocking. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've never been there actually. I just I remember seeing commercials as a kid. Well, it was always the first place you could go on the Jersey Shore when you're heading south. Yep. to go to the beach or go to the amusement park or whatever. And it's just a little square mile town. You know, back at the back at the time, the reason I left, I mean, I went for went to school there at Kingsburg Public School from uh, kindergarten to eighth grade. But the, the school at the time didn't have a high school. They had already proved they already got approved for one. They were going to have one. Mm-hmm. But my folks didn't think I should be – they were bussing kids around the different schools, and my my folks didn't think I'd you know that was good for me. So they threatened to send me to a military school, and I was going, no. <laughs> but then I asked my mom. I said, well, just send me to, send me to Georgia because I, I was in Atlanta the, the, the year before that, and I right. loved it. I said, just send me to Atlanta, and I'll be fine. No one, it was never going to happen. But she remembered one, and I went. And that, there so there go. it is. Wow. So uh, Roger and I were talking a little bit about music. Um, we we're talking about playing live and, and uh, you know, the unfortunate decline of it in, in, in around the country with, with clubs closing and, and less places to get out there and play. It, it, just, yeah, it seems to me, uh, like I said, there is so much out there now, but uh, it's almost like there's so much that nobody's really listening. I mean, it used to be in back in the day, and let's take like let's take Elvis for instance. Right. He, he cut a single, or he cut a, cut a record, or Hank Williams, Hank Williams, any of, any of those guys in the early days, and they'd cut a record, and they would get on they, they would get it onto a radio station, which is the way they did it in Memphis. They mm-hmm. broke it broke it open for Elvis then, and then he'd go out on the road and play the music so people could hear it. The whole idea of music is to hear it, is to listen. Right. So now you go to a you know you go to a club or something like that and and the audio it's just it's different it's like it's almost like sometimes now there are audiences there are listening rooms and places where you can go but they're not listening in the masses the way they used to you know it's just it's it's very, it's very selective so if you play a sports bar maybe I mean, some, maybe somebody's hearing you you know 
That's a tough audience. It is because it, there's so much. To, you know, you, 37 TVs have games on, and it's you're trying to. But a gig is a gig, and, and everybody out there is fighting for a gig. Yeah, you know? and everybody's fighting. Um, so many are fighting over the same gigs. That's why I was talking to you earlier about when I did this RV park thing. It was like everybody's over here fighting for these gigs. I'm going to go over here and find this other one. So that's so kind of what I to, did. You have to really kind of find your niche. Find something to you know that just off the beaten path. Think out of the box a little bit. Yeah. Someplace else. That's it's. Smart. It is smart because, you, you know, it's like we were saying, it's getting harder and harder for, for musicians to do that. And you mentioned Stevie uh, during when we were listening to the song about how Stevie's kind of, you know, trying to do that with his school program and, and uh, you know, and also just bas- basically out there what he's doing right he's, now. He's leaving, he's leaving a massive mark. I mean, a lot of musicians do, you know, of course, Bruce has left a massive mark. I mean, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of musicians have left marks, but he's leaving one that's just unprecedented because he's going out there. It's not all just about getting on stage and playing songs, you know, walking off and going, um, you I'm know, great. Yeah. You know, that, that kind of thing. It's not, man, it's not even that at all. He's, he's bringing school teachers in. He's doing these workshops in every city, a two hour workshop with a syllabus and a, a curriculum that's developed out of rock, the history of rock and roll to be incorporated into these kids. Cause he says the teachers are the last line of defense that we have, you know, now. Right. And it, it's amazing. And, uh, and also, you know, anytime there's a, uh, bu- budget cuts in education usually the first things to go are, are, it's, it's the, are first, the arts programs it is i mean it really is i have and i have one teacher I, I was doing the blues in the schools thing i have a school teacher was a teacher of the year in my area young guy um wonderful guy very very intelligent and talented and he brought me into his school to do it but it was him, somebody like him that saw what i was doing mm-hmm. but overall if you just talk to an administrator or you know they're all about testing and bean counting and all this other stuff and yeah. so it's uh that, that's what you're up against it's unfortunate it's unfortunate roger i wish we could we had more time so that means you have to come back whenever you want to come <laughs> back you're always welcome and dave will be here too and i'm sure you and dave so. will have some great conversations uh talking about the music well, and the blues and everything else. well i made a whole list of things but, but you know that we were i've heard you guys talking you know, last year i mean excuse me last week when i called in mm-hmm. we we're talking about the fm band Oh, yeah. You know, when I called in, I said there was a window of time around 72, 73 when FM was like wide open. When I was on a college station in Atlanta and we were the biggest station in town putting on shows and we were killing it. And then the corporate thing set in. And Dave said, after I got off the air last week, he says, well, Roger's talking about five years after what I was talking about. But I'm, and I, I should have reiterated that I remember in 1968 when the FM band went on and it was referred to as underground radio. Yeah. That, that that's when it was happening and, and all the rock things were happening, you know, the under, and it was, but it was, it was not a, I don't know, not supervised or, or structured, I should say, maybe. They didn't, know. they didn't care so, as freeform. much. Freeform. Yeah. Freeform. So you could play whatever you wanted to play because there was, Again, nobody was paying attention to FM, but little did they realize that there was a whole, like you said, underground yeah. of young people that were tuning into this because this is where you, they could hear something they never heard before. You exactly, know? you and could then, hear a seven and a half minute song. Yeah, and then I, it was it was WPLO FM in Atlanta, which was the, that station. And then of course any WFM, and I remember you know Alice and Steele and everybody and all yeah. those all those people that were on there, man, and and they. They play the tracks. The, they take a long track. They take the, the Fillmore one side whipping post and just, just leave it. it. Just, just let it run. <laughs> and it was it, it was wonderful. But it, but it was a good run while it lasted. Right? Yeah, it was. I and you know I, I had you know studying radio. I've been I was I read so many stories about all these great stations and all these fantastic DJs and the stuff that they were just able to do. And it just sounded like a a, a fantastic moment in time. Yeah. You know? Now I know, I know you covered a Bruce song, so we're going to play that as we okay. as we as we wrap up for today on Live from East Street Nation. And thank you everybody for calling in. We'll talk about more bootlegs uh, in the weeks to come regarding bootleg shows. Um, so I, I like your take on this. I like well, you're a guitar player. Well, yeah. I mean, I I recorded it in my home studio, and I uh, I tried like it's so funny when you hear Bruce do a song. Like like I recorded that, then I'll hear another version that he did somewhere, and he'll take his his songs and take them just somewhere else. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and uh, but I tried to stay true to the the arrangement, which is what I did. But at the end, I said, you know, I told you earlier, I said, well, I am a guitar player, so I played a guitar lead at the end. But other than that, I tried to stay close to the mood because the Bruce and I parallel. I mean, his life and, and I parallel. I mean, his he doesn't know me or anything like that. But I mean, he might remember me, you know, walking in on him forty years ago, maybe. But um. His dad suffered from depression. My dad suffered from depression. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we had the same kind of upbringing. And back in the day, like he was in Freehold and I was in Keensburg, 
nothing is isolated now, but that was an isolated area. That little stretch of the Jersey Shore, it was very isolated. Yeah. You know, so the, the mark that he's made to come out of there doing what he's done to put it on the map like that is amazing. Now social media, you know, everything is, is everywhere. But back then, it was an isolated place. It was, it was hard. I mean, it was hard to get out of there. And I had to get out. And, and even in the song that we just played, you know, you have to, and to love it, you have to leave it. Right, you know, and that's that's kind of what I did, and, and I'm coming back, and I'm not living there or anything, but I but I I have pleasant memories of the place, and and there's good people there. Right, like kind of like what Bruce uh, he, he says in the Broadway show, not to give away a spoiler, but uh, you know, he <laughs> I'm Mister Born to Run. I got to run. I got to get away. I got to do all this. I, I live ten minutes from where I grew up. <laughs> exactly. You know. Yeah. So to love it, you got to leave it, like you said. True, and so that's the same with the uh, even, even with like the the Amish religion. They the, they give the kids a year yes. you know, to go out to run out and and you know knock it out and see if you want it. And then you got a choice. Same kind of thing. You got to love it to leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Leave Roger it. Hurricane Wilson. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure meeting you in person. Finally, it's great to have you here. And uh, hurricanewilson.com is where you can find out more information. You got some shows coming up. You want to? I've got you know I've got a festival uh, back in Kennesaw, Georgia, on the twenty fourth of, of uh, August. With my band, myself, and the Hurricane Homeboys. Mm-hmm. Guys been with me twenty years. Marvin Mahaney and Billy Jeanson. They're my three piece. Uh, we're a three piece band, and they've been with me twenty years. We got we do the Pigs and Peaches Festival in Kennesaw, Georgia. And that's on the 24th, of, uh, Friday, the 24th of August. I'll, awesome. get, I'll get home in time for that. Awesome. Awesome. And but I, 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 I got to tell you, it's just such an honor to have been invited here. I just, you, you guys really need to know that. Well, it's a pleasure having you. We're, you know, we're glad you're here, and uh, you're going to come back next time you're out this I'm, way. I'm, we're going to come back. All right. I talked to my wife last night because she loves the city. Uh, there you go. So we're going <laughs> to we're gonna work it out. Good. Good. Please do. All right. So we're going to wrap with uh, Roger Hurricane Wilson's version of My Hometown, and then we're going to wrap up for the rest of the show. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. I'll be back live Friday night uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And... Uh, Rock on. I was eight years old, running with a dime in my hand. Down to the bus stop, pick up a paper from my old man. I sit in his lap in a big old Buick, steer as we drove through town. He tussled my hair, said, son, this is your hometown. Your hometown. This is your hometown. Your hometown. This is your hometown. In '65, tensions were running high in my high school. A lot of fights between black and white There was nothing you could do Two cars at a light on Saturday night In the back seat there was a gun Words were passed, shotgun blast Trouble times did come My hometown to my hometown my hometown to my hometown now main streets whitewashed windows and vacant stores Seems like nobody wants to come down here no more. They're closing down the textile mills across the railroad track. Foreman says these jobs are going, boys. 
and they ain't coming back to your hometown to your hometown your hometown to your hometown last night me and Kate were laying in bed talking about getting out packing up our bags and maybe head down south we're 35 we got a boy of our own now last night I sat him up behind the wheel and said son take a good look around this is your hometown From E Street Nation with hosts Dave Marsh and Jim Rotolo. Join the next discussion about all things Springsteen live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, exclusively on Sirius XM's E Street Radio.